I'm Emily Nimmo. I'm the digital archi archivist for Archans, which just basically means I'm the repository manager there. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about how we've been working to embed trust into our repository design and the different software and solutions we've been looking at to, to do that to best meet our needs. So, who is Archans? Archans is the Royal Commission for the Ancient and Historical Monuments of Scotland. Um, we're basically the national collection for the heritage landscape of Scotland, so we collect all things architectural and archaeological, amongst others. Um, for the last hundred years, we've been surveying, recording and collecting information on Scotland's landscape, and our website here has more than 30,000 sites for Scotland. Um, we've been collecting digital materials since the late 1990s, and our digital collections come from our internal survey work, but also from commercial archaeological units, architectural practices, and interested members of the public who insist on giving me things. Um, <laughs> so that's a wide range of diverse file types and formats. Um, to give you a scale of our collections, we've got 200,000 ingested um, digital objects in the archive and about a similar number in our pre-ingest environment or our cataloging backlog as I like to think of it. Um, we've got 30,000 items we deposited last year and this is forecast to grow. So what you can see here is that from 2007 we've been growing um, quite steadily at about 2 terabytes a year. The last is the first quarter of this year, the last column there, and we saw the same growth in, six, in three months that we would see, expect to see in six. So um, our deposits are, are growing internally and ex externally. What you can see on the left here is the, the relative um, volume of catalogued and uncatalogued material. So you can see that our processes are not keeping pace with our deposits and we recognise now that there's a, a really urgent need to, to automate, to streamline and to become more scalable as our deposit rates grow. So. <coughs> I've, I've, uh, I've mentioned trust a few times about one of our main aims and we're working towards trustworthiness. What you can see here are the 10 um, key principles of trusted repository design and that's one of the main things that we're working towards. It's our mission to achieve that with, in a, a certified sense through, through track and one of the ways we're doing that is, that is using Platter. It's a tool that was developed by Digital Preservation Europe back in 2007 but it's still really helpful, it gives you a basis to embed trustworthiness in from the planning stage so that when you get to the stage where you've got the number of items I've got, you're already trusted. So I, I was going to call this obstacles, but I thought I would be positive. What are our challenges? Well, our challenges are really the, the kind of data that we hold. The, the fast pace of technological change within the archaeological community means that we're dealing with emerging technologies much sooner than a lot of our, our counterparts. And that can be really challenging. This is an example of some of the most challenging data we hold. This is a scan of Penn Caitlin Church to the southeast of where we are now that was done by one of my colleagues in our survey department. And 3D laser scanning is challenging for preservation purposes because of the large file sizes and the lack of accepted standards. Um, the lack of standards is challenging because it means that people using different kinds of proprietary software can't exchange their data and we struggle to find appropriate preservation formats. One of the, the most common interchange formats is an XYZ file, and that's just basically three coordinates of a port, point in space, northing, easting, and elevation. But one of the problems with that is you don't get the intensity colour value. So you can see this is what happens when you re-import that back into the proprietary software. It's a big problem. So this sort of highlights another one of our challenges, and it's about balancing accessibility of the data against the cost and the realities of budgets and storage. So we've already seen that you might need two or three different versions of that. Now, the general public are also one of our main, um, our main audiences, and we can't expect them to have the kind of software to, to view this, this data, and even if they did, they probably wouldn't be able to use it or interpret it. So now we're thinking about images like I've used here, videos of, of the object spinning in place. So, that's now at least five times the, the storage for each object. But I want to throw out a question is, are we maybe thinking about this all wrong? So there's no way that we would consider translating every medieval man Latin manuscript in our collection so that an, a non-expert user from the street would be able to read it. So why do I worry about translating my data five, six times? Can I just throw it out there? So we've seen that we've got a lot of challenges to meet. We need to, to automate and streamline. So we've been looking at repositories and what uh, repository software can do for us. And one of the systems that we've been looking at um, 
is safety deposit box, and that's meeting a lot of our needs. And this is just a kind of high-level view of how safety deposit box would integrate with our existing <coughs> systems and the, and the kind of functions involved in that. So, safety deposit box was developed by Tesella and national archive bodies across Europe. It's um, it's been developed by the leading experts across Europe. It's already had multi-million pound investment in it. So in that sense, I'm looking at it as, as the way to stand on the shoulder of giants. You know, there's no need to really reinvent that wheel that I can see. Um, we already share the community priorities with the, the users of this. And the, the workflow model means that you can take the, a preservation workflow that's developed by, say, National Archives of the Netherlands and just import it so you're expanding. <coughs> So, we also know that we need to think about the long-term sustainability of repository software. If I developed this in-house, it wouldn't be interchangeable, it wouldn't be, uh, there wouldn't be an, the same level of international commitment to its ongoing development. And this is just an example of the kind of automation of our regular ingest workflow that STB could provide for us. And a lot of that is um, disjointed at the moment, it's very hands-on, it's very much not meeting our needs. And this is one of the things that we were really looking for to achieve with investigating all these different kind of solutions. So that's my whistle-stop tour of what we've been doing. If anybody wants to ask me a little bit more about that, I'm happy to do so. Yeah.